What up, fam? It's your girl, Des, coming to you today to go ahead and bring y'all Love and Hip Hop Season 6, Episode 2. All right, this is gonna be quick. I forgot I had a meeting at work. All right, so, and you know, I'm on my lunch break, okay? A bitch is hungry. Anyway, so it starts off where we left off, I think, last episode with Monice and April. And let me just say this. April is dead ass wrong for how she was talking about Monice and her motherfucking professionals. Like, being so shady and all this type of shit. Like, she's obviously doing the motherfucking most to try to keep her spot for next season or whatever the fuck. Because I don't know if y'all saw, but Monice been breaking that fourth wall and telling us what the fuck has been going on. Song. Okay, Monique said production basically told them that they had made up too motherfucking fast. So they had to go back to the location and give them a little bit of um, a little bit of something. So... This shit is fake. Last review, I was talking about how I think that Monique still wants Fizz. No, I, I will take that back. I don't necessarily think that she wants Fizz or whatever, especially after she had explained to us that, you know, this is really about her son, Cam, and how, you know, she doesn't want him lying to her son and then, or she doesn't like when Fizz and his bitches talk shit about her to her kid. And that's definitely understandable. She should be respected, most definitely. However, if the bitch is talking about you and your son is nowhere to be found around, then fuck it, sis. Who cares? Who cares? Now, she th they talk about you in front of your kid. I understand that's a motherfucking problem. So, I understand where Monique is coming from. Or Monique, excuse me. The editing, they did a damn good job because I showed it and she wanted Fizz. But she said she only cares about the dishonesty and how basically when... Fizz told her that they was going to go on to Chicago. He ain't let her or her son know there was about to be a motherfucking family trip with April. Now she's going to make sure her son is comfortable. And even Cam then told her that he even thinks that Fizz and April are together. But, you know, they said that they're friends. April said she didn't know about that. She thought that Monique knew. Bada boom, bada bing. So they kind of make up a little bit. Um, but yet, April was still being shady as fuck in the confessionals. Meanwhile, Monique kept it nice, mature, and classy. She wasn't even talking about April bad like April was doing her, but April is a fucking mess. Next, April watch is back. All right, so she says last year was extra as fuck for her. You know what I mean? She had that fake-ass manager. Where the fuck they at? Pulled off the fucking wig of her daughter to beat somebody else's ass with it. Like, look, uh, Mona said, listen, y'all, y'all doing too motherfucking much, okay? I, I, even I can't deal, all right? So they asses ain't back. Um, and then, you know, she had that shit with that dude that was acting like he was her father on some creep shit. And then she also says, you know, her, her family not on good terms, but she sent her oldest son to go live with her sister because he's getting caught up in the L.A. life and shit and how she wants better for him. But she still watching her other two kids, her younger kids. Okay, so she goes to Yo-Yo, little talent show of some sorts, and Yo-Yo is Ice Cube's protege from um, the eight, like 89 or, or something like the 80s and the 90s. So, you know, Yo-Yo is going to be the old school, the original queen of hip-hop, you know, and how she is like the mother figure and also a mentor for all the kids in the hood who wants to be in the music business. So that's her way of giving back. And I don't know, her energy, just the type of person she is, I really feel like this is something good. And then especially her and Apple, they connect. This is something that Apple needs, like most definitely, cause she gotta spread her wisdom. And Apple definitely needs somebody like that in her corner because she seems she, she is really genuine and you know, motherly. Now they talking and Apple saying how you know it, she's been wilding out. She talks about how she's been drinking too much. We also see, you know, a snippet of a live that she went on saying how she don't, she probably won't be on the TV. She ain't like these other fake bitches and woo wop woo wop woo wop Now, Yo-Yo tells her that she needs to have positive people around her. She got to stay focused. Eyes on the motherfucking prize. Come on, Apple. Get your shit together. Next, 
Lyrica the second and told us that her homegirl flew down from the ATL, I believe, um, after Jason broke the story about Summer Bunny then hopped into her nigga next. And Princess comes over and they have a moment. She's crying to them, saying how she feels like she does everything for A1. She's always thinking about A1 and she then lost herself. All right. And it seems like Lyrica was saying that, you know, she felt like a baby was going to make things better for them. And that's just, just so fucking cliche. Why do women feel that way? All of the ancient ass niggas and all the fucked up ass examples that be going on on a day to day motherfucking basis, not even on TV, that you just hear about. Just like Princess said, a nigga is only gonna wanna change if he wants to motherfucking change. A baby ain't gonna do that. But Lyrica the second homegirl is basically like, listen, you was Lyrica Anderson before A1 was even a producer, was even who the fuck he was. Don't you forget who the fuck you are, you know, which is true, T. Now, Lyrica. The second homegirl also said that, you know, they should pop up on A1 when he have his uh, show over there in Hollywood, L.A. or whatever, that next week. Why? Why? You blocked him, sis. So why not wait until he's done and then y'all can talk? Like, that shit is just petty. I'm just like, is, is y'all married or what? Like that, that's just, that, that, that just threw me off. Why I gotta pull up any fucking well? But I guess y'all, next. April said she's been worrying about her, Marion's case. You know, she hasn't been able to focus or work with her first love. Girl, bye. That's your first love, but you feel like you think you can sing, sing when Britney B, I'll talk about that later. When, when Britney Bree asked her, she's like, oh yeah, I, I think I can. Bitch, that's your first love. You know you can. I cannot deal with April. I don't like April. Who likes April? April is fucking annoying to me. But she meets up with Monice in her studio. You know, Monice is working on her project. And she tells April that you know, she thinks it's a good idea if they went on tour together. You know, they baby daddies are on tour. Why can't they be on tour? And here comes April. Oh, God. You was talking about me selling my pussy. And I really don't understand, like, how she, you know, oh, you been talking about me wanting to sell my pussy. And then months later, here you are motherfucking live pointing at your pussy and telling us how everybody wants your pussy. Like, all you was talking about on that live was your pussy. Girl, please. She's trying to give you a motherfucking opportunity. You either gonna take it or leave it. Is it a... Is it a wise one? I mean, that just depends on who you are to think that this is actually gonna work. But none the motherfucking less, Monice is trying to get back in with her music, which, I mean, we can't fault her for that. Yes, yeah, she's a reality TV star, but if she feels like music makes her happy, then why the fuck not? And I think it's commendable that she's even putting together her own motherfucking tour. Like, that's pretty big. So, shout out to you, Monice. Monice just tells us, listen, I just want to be in a loop when it comes to my kid. That's it. And here come April being extra shady in the comments, talking about some Monice is always uh, switching up. First, she likes her. Then she's telling people that she's selling her pussy. Now she wants her to go on tour. She be flip-flopping or she always switching up like her breast implants. Like, that was just uncalled for shade for what reason bitch you didn't tell her no so why are you even talking about her like that in the confessionals like it's just so fake i just cannot with april she's trying way too motherfucking hard like relax mom it's only episode two you got some time all right next so yo yo school of hip-hop you know i think that she was saying that they open up a new location or whatever and that she's been partnered with somebody and stuff and so apple watts is there she shows up with mr ray glad mr ray is back um looking like a little butterball but you know he's still cool he cool now mr ray also did invite his summer bunny to hop her ass around here you know and as soon as meeting, you know, Yo-Yo asked Summer Bunny, well, can you know, can you spit me something? Can you drop something for me? Give me a little something, something. So she gives her a little rap. And after that, here comes Apple Watts going in, you know, on Summer Bunny and her rap, which wasn't, it actually wasn't that bad. It was actually pretty good, especially if it was on top of the dome. But at the end of the day, it was uncalled for. Like, Apple Watts is trying to fight Lyrica's battles 
like she oh that's my friend da 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 like bitch lyrical was ready to whoop your ass over a1 last season because you were shaking your ass in front of his face though that was your job ain't nobody mad at you you know get your coin boo but it's just weird that you trying to go all up and go hard for lyrica the second and a1 like it's really none of your business now granted like you know if that's your friend you know okay you can still be uh, not want to really associate yourself with her okay i guess but the fact that you know she was really being combative with the girl and summer bunny was okay well you know i don't well let me just tell you this and apple was like, uh-uh you about to tell me nothing bitch and da 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 da, -da. and then you know getting all hype up in the mouth here comes motherfucking the security and all this other type of shit uh uh bad bunny what oh, oh, oh a summer bunny fucking take off her shoes and apple watch said you ain't no real bitch you gonna take off your shoes bitch everybody know you gotta take off your wig first that's the first thing motherfuckers go for I'm like what what what's going on here why why is that fucking called for any of it apple watch is doing the absolute motherfucking most and, and like bitch like you and lyrica the second ain't even cool like that so who the fuck you think you is but i'm glad supper bunny showed us that she ain't no bitch that's a fact. I ain't gonna be no bitch. You ain't gonna be talking to me motherfucking crazy. But I'm not about to sit up here and just engage into some shit. Like, I really got an issue with you when I don't, bitch. I don't even know you. So, I don't really... Uh, everybody's saying she's a home wrecker. I mean, it's always on the woman, which is pathetic to me. Like, nigga, how can I wreck a home that I was invited to? Okay, granted, I'm not saying, you know, it's right... But at the end of the day, it's more so on the husband because he made a vow to God and to his wife. So, listen, I can't fucking deal, okay? Like, this thing right here, all this right here, extra as fuck for no reason at all. Next, K. Michelle's having a listening party for her. She made sure she told us her fifth, baby, her fifth R&B album. Okay. That was weird, my... So, Brittany B, Moniz, and April, they're there. April was invited by Moniz. So, randomly, you know, they was talking about it. And Brittany, that, when I was saying earlier, Brittany B had asked April, you know, can she sing or can she sing, sing? And they had this little bitty debacle where there was like, you can tell it was kind of hostile, whatever. And they was just like, oh, well, well, Brittany B asked this, you know, I'm from Compton. I'm a real ass bitch and da, 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 talking in third person. And April like, well, I'm from Chicago, whatever the fuck she says. And then they won't kind of going back and forth. Like, on the fucking call for but britney b said that she knows bitches like april and how she basically she ain't going nowhere just because you drop a little a little something to shake your ass to them me you're an artist or some shit like that child listen listen <sighs> now moniz tells them that her and april they're thinking about going on tour together and k michelle is just all type of confused like what the fuck is she talking about that's the dumbass idea child walked away and everything so moniz goes up to me k michelle just like you know why'd you walk away like what's wrong what are you feeling and k michelle's just like that's just dumb as fuck y'all y'all hoes is just arguing some shit she fucking with your baby daddy or, or would you how would you feel if you found out that she was kissing up on your baby daddy and then I guess April was coming up, and April, and then she was like, "What? weren't you kissing up on her baby daddy or some shit? She just said that she hasn't been fucking with Fizz. So I don't think she even much really answered a yes or a no to that question. But none of the motherfucking less, Monice is like, I don't even care if she was kissing or fucking up on Fizz. And she tells us in the confessional, I don't give a fuck about what he sticks his dick into, what he who sucks his dick i don't give a fuck about the dick i just want to make sure shit with my son is good that's it and we i mean why would she care she shouldn't care but k michelle nonetheless she thinks it's a dumbass idea and did they go on tour i doubt it now i was confused when april was telling k michelle you know how motherhood is gonna change her it's so great da 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 like didn't K. Michelle tell us last episode that she had a teenage son? So she's literally had a child before. So what the fuck are you talking about that motherhood changes you? And bitch, what did motherhood change about you, may I ask? Can somebody let me know? Because I don't know the bitch. And this is a real true motherfucking question. Because I don't know April like that. I didn't watch her. So, somebody let me know. Thank you. K. Michelle said that April then hopped from the lead singer to the motherfucker who barely even opened his goddamn mouth. <laughs> like... 
<laughs> she said she don't give a damn. She said she want to make sure she going to stay in the group. Like, who next, baby? Who next? But wait, that's her best friend, though. But April was really trying to go back and forth with K. Michelle up there in that damn coat looking like a goddamn chinchilla. Sis. Like, she obviously she's overdoing it for the cameras. And it's just getting, it's already exhausting, bitch. It's episode two. Next. Britney B and Black China, they meet up in the studio and basically, you know, they have a good heartfelt conversation about, you know, how it was growing up rough. Mostly Britney B was telling us how her mom is a drug addict. Remember last episode, she tells us when she was younger, her dad died. So all she had was her poems and writing her music and stuff. But she tells us how, you know, her mom is a shitty mom, that she didn't love them. You know, she was addicted to whatever she was addicted to. She was a drug addict. And it, it's just, it's disheartening to hear, you know, people go through that when it comes to their parents um, suffering from or struggling with an addiction. But, you know, I feel like especially when we get older and we understand what addiction does, yes, you should fight through it. But then, I mean, addiction is what the fuck it is. They are addicted. And she was saying how her mama was selling all her shit, used to sell her baby pictures and uh, you sell her clothes, which is fucking sad. And this is somebody who, I mean, I don't have any parents that are drug addicts. So, of course, I'm coming from something different. I never lived through it. But if you know, once being an adult, how drugs can affect you and affect your mind and what you do, then, I mean, can you really blame your mama for everything that she did? You know, I feel like now is the time for y'all to rebuild shit. But, you know, who knows? Her mama comes, they have a conversation next week. But Black China tells her because we know Black China, her mom got some fucking issues. But Black China just tells her, you know, try to have some sympathy with your mom. So that was cute and everything. She understands that it's hard, but just try. Next. So K. Michelle and her surrogate, they go to the doctor. Her surrogate and everything is good with that. So then her doctor wants to talk to K. Michelle. He tells her on a scale of 1 to 10, her eggs are out of 3. And... Even if we don't even know about IVF and, and shit like that, we know at a scale of 1 to 10, 3 is not where the fuck you want to be in anything, 10 being the best. Now, he tells us that there are some kids that do come from a 3 and 4, you know, but they want to aim closer to a 7. So, he recommends for K to go through some more IVF treatments to get some more eggs. Now, K. Michelle says she's not really sure about that. IVF is really hard, you know, and you got to um, take medicine. You got to motherfucking get a shot every day at the same time. It's painful, you know, and it's, and it's time consuming and, and it's understandable. So, I'm curious just to see if they're going to just stick with the three eggs because he said it can't be possible or if they're going to try to do IVF. But whatever she does, her kids, her embryo, her eggs, she's going to find out something that works out best for her and her family. And that's fine. Next. All right, y'all. April motherfucking Fizz. Listen. They annoy the fuck out of me. This whole, oh, we're best friends. Now he's saying that he's sleeping on her couch. Bitch, sleeping on her couch because while they on tour, he went here and, and um got rid of his apartment or whatever the fuck, put his shit in storage. and But then April said he can stay with her or whatever the fuck and all this other type of shit. They're not fucking. But yet, he's telling her how he can see her ass in her fucking pajamas or some shit. She's like, what? You can see my ass in this? And Fizz is like, you can see your ass in anything. Your ass is ginormous and shit. I just don't get best friend vibes from them. I definitely get we're fucking on the low type of shit vibes. And I think it's motherfucking corny as fuck. And Moniz tells us, bitch, that uh that Fizz is really hiding from the goddamn police. <laughs> okay? But... April also tells us that she's going through it in the courts with Omarion and how Omarion put his name in the docket and shit. And if this is like, my name, why, for what? She tells him that, that, that they were having an affair, which, were they ever married? Was that the right term to use, an affair? Fizz is saying that Omarion is corny or whack or lame for how he's doing April and how he's doing the most. And I'm like, ain't you one the motherfucking talk? All this shit you talk about. Moniz publicly allowing people to talk about her publicly and yet it's so easy to see that what Omarion is doing is some lame weak whack whatever the fuck type of shit but here you are doing the absolute motherfucking most always disrespecting your motherfucking baby mama in the public's eye but you don't see that what you do is foul uncalled for 
Really? Not just talking about moving in together. I mean, they're just best friends. Why the fuck not? I'm just... Nobody believes y'all. Even if y'all wasn't fucking. We still believe in that y'all fucking. Y'all do too much. The whole best friend shit. Then you actually flirting on camera. Then hell, Monique tells us that even your damn son think that y'all are together. It's just, it's just too much. And I'm, I'm sick of it already. And it's only what episode motherfucking two. I cannot. April tells Fizz that she talked to Monique and shit. How she apologized. And then how she said that they should go on tour together. And here comes, you know, uh, Fizz laughing and shit. And it's just like, nigga, what happened to your solo career though? Oh, Okay. Granted, nobody thinks this is going to work out because of April funky ass attitude. But at the end of the day, nigga, how dare ye talk about anybody going on tour? Stop it. Next. All right, so it ends off where they're going to pick up next motherfucking episode. Mr. Ray's having a little shindig. You know what I'm saying? He didn't invite his summer bunny, Apple Watts, Lyrica the second, Ray J, Princess, and all that. Now, what we do see, we see uh, Ray come in. You know, of course, he said he had to support the other Ray. And Summer Bunny is there. So they introduce themselves. Oh, yeah, let me go back. Let me go back. Before Ray and Princess even got there, Summer Bunny was crying to uh, Yo Yo, Mr. Ray and them, was saying how, you know, it's hard. She got to fight through the blogs every day because they was talking about Apple Watts coming there. And he had said that he didn't disinvite or retract his invitation to anybody and how everybody got to basically grow the fuck up and be cordial with one another. But Summer Bunny was saying how it's hard. People always blowing up her phone with the bullshit. People on the blogs talking about her and she's crying. And, you know, Yo-Yo's basically like, listen, you got to suck that shit up. People going to talk about your ass all the motherfucking time. You got to be motherfucking strong. Okay? Basically, listen, dry the motherfucking tears. Everybody's going to talk their shit. Do what the fuck you came here to do. You want to make music, make motherfucking music. Don't worry about what everybody else has to motherfucking say. Period. So then... Here come Ray J and Princess, you know, and then they meet Summer Bunny. And then Ray J was like, you, oh, oh, you know A1, right? Summer's like, yes. And then Princess like, hold on, that's her? And I look back, you know, and then who knows how the fuck this is all going to go, child. We see next uh, episode, Apple Watts and uh, Lyrica the second, they come in that bitch together. And it looked like, I was confused on this. Summer Bunny was talking to Lyrica and getting hyped with her. If she was getting hyped with Apple Watts. I don't know. But, bitch, listen. Listen. I don't know if this shit is fake when it comes to Summer Bunny and Lyrica and them. But, they need to get this shit together. That's all I have, y'all. I hope y'all enjoy y'all motherfucking day. I hope y'all enjoyed the review. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you fucks with me. And if you care, go ahead and share. And I'll fuck with y'all in the next video. Bye.